In this video, we are going to solve a hypothesis test problem, a hypothesis test for the population mean. We are going to use the test statistic critical value approach, and we are in a realistic situation when we don't know the standard deviation. This will be an example of a one-tailed test. The problem says like this. The following data in kilograms, which were selected randomly from a normally distributed population of values, represent measurements of a machine part that is supposed to weigh on average 8.3 kilograms. And here we have all the measurements. Use this data, an alpha equals 0.01, to test the hypothesis that the pars average is more than 8.3 kilograms. So we are going to test that the average is more than 8.3 kilograms. So this statement is one of the hypotheses. So this will be, of course, the alternative hypothesis because it doesn't have equal signs. It doesn't have an equal. They say it's more than. So I'm going to type this hypothesis and this will be the alternative hypothesis. And by the way, this alternative hypothesis will be the research hypothesis. So let's type that this is the research hypothesis. The opposite of this, the opposite of, of being more than 8.3 will be less or equal than 8.3. So the null hypothesis will be mu less or equal than 8.3. Some researchers type here mu equal 8.3 because actually what we are going to do is assume that mu is equal to 8.3. And we know that the sampling distribution of the mean when we use the sample standard deviation will be a T distribution because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 data. So this will be a T distribution with 19 degrees of freedom. The T distribution with 19 degrees of freedom, they look similar to the normal distribution. And because this is a right tail test, we are going to test that mu is more than 8.3. The alternative hypothesis said mu more than 8.3. Then this will be a right tail test. So the rejection area will be an area to the right. And we need to find this point here the critical point that separates acceptance region from the rejection region. So let's find this critical value. We know that we are going to use alpha equals 0 0.01. So the rejection region will have an area of 0 0.01, 1%. One so this 1% will be this area here. And then our critical value will be one that have 1% 1 to the right and of course 99% to the left. Let's use a software to find this T. Let's use, for example, Excel. In Excel, you are going to type in any cell of Excel. Equal, you need to start with an equal sign, equal T inverse of 0.99 comma 19. So you need to type the number of degree of freedom because we have 20 data, the degree of freedom n minus 1 will be 19. So we have the degree of freedom if 19 and this t inverse and this function will give me this critical value. So the value of t that has 99% to the left. So let's type enter and they tell me the value, 2.5395. So this value here will be 2.5395. What I'm going to do now is compute the test statistic that we know that is the T distribution. So we are going to compute the test statistic T distribution. And we know that the formula of this T test will be T equal the sample mean minus the population mean, and this will be the population mean given in the null hypothesis, mu equal 8.3, divided by the standard deviation over the square root of n, the number of data. See, this s is the standard deviation, and this n is 
20 because we have 20 data. So let's compute using Excel or using any software the sample mean. So you need to get the sample mean of all this data, 8.4, 8.4, etc., until 8.7. So I compute the sample mean and the answer was 8.395. I also can use the same software, for example, Excel, to compute the standard deviation. If I compute the standard deviation, of course, you can use also a calculator. It will be, will be a long work. Yeah? If I use Excel to compute the standard deviation, the number that I found is 0 0.7131. So I make a substitution of all this value, the mean that I computed, the sample, the deviation that I computed, the population mean stated in the null hypothesis, and end the, to the total number of data, 20. So make a substitution and use a calculator to compute T. If this T falls in the rejection area, we are going to reject the null hypothesis, and we are going to accept the research hypothesis that mu is more than 8.3. So let's compute it. So when I computed, the answer was 2.4543. And 2.4543 is lower than 2.5395. So it will be a number like here. So we are in the acceptance area. We are not in the rejection area. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So as a conclusion, because the t test statistics falls in the acceptance regions, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So we cannot affirm that mu is more than 8.3. These things that the researchers was believing cannot be accepted, at least with 1% level of significance. But with that, I finish the explanation of this one tail test. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.